said he will place every child on a ladder to success. Listen to this. My plan will use $20 billion of existing federal dollars to establish a block grant for the 11 million school age kids living in absolute poverty. We will give states the option to allow these funds to follow the student to the public or private school they attend. Let's talk about it right now with education technology innovator EverFi co-founder and CEO Tom Davidson. Tom, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. What struck you most about Donald Trump's plan yesterday? And then I want to get your reaction to what Hillary has been saying about the same. Sure. So good for him for talking about getting kids on the ladder of success. We all want that. This is a bipartisan issue. Uh, it has been for a long time. I think what everybody needs to realize is how difficult that climb is. Students get out of bed every morning with very different challenges, different issues. They come to school hungry. They come to school with very different lives at home. They come to school with different challenges, different classrooms. And for the first time ever, we're seeing ways that technology can really change that. Uh, but it's a difficult climb. And you're born into the wrong zip code. It starts you off in a pretty tough place in this country. Uh, in, in terms of the both candidates' policies, who's overpromising? You think? Well, I think my ch you know what I worry about is not that they're overpromising. It's that you'll have one line in a uh, convention speech, or that you'll hear about this once every three months on the cam tra campaign trail. I actually don't think either of them are talking about enough. Now, here's uh, the challenge: you have a situation where. Different schools, whether you're born into the wrong zip code or not, have different funding mechanisms, different resources around them. And so you really need to build infrastructure across the country that support kids no matter where, they, where they're from. That's a real challenge. Let me ask you about this, uh, this big money raise you had. You raised $40 million in funding from major technology companies uh, like Bezos Expeditions, an arm of Amazon founder, CEO Jeff Bezos, uh, Google executive Eric Schmidt. Tomorrow Ventures, an investment arm of, of, of Google. What are you going to tell me how you're working with these technology companies to change the, the trajectory? Yeah, so if you think students. about it, education is really the last place. If you think about transportation, healthcare, drug delivery, they've all been really helped by uh, technology and advent of technology. That hasn't really happened as much in education, but that's changing. I think one of the things that we got excited about is these individuals, uh, Jeff Bezos, Eric Schmidt, Evan Williams from Twitter and Medium, uh, all invested in the company really for two reasons. One is they're really passionate about changing lives for kids. Second thing is they've built really big networks and they understand the power of networks in helping people learn, helping people get access to information. That was why it was important for us to get them involved. Uh, you have a situation now where classrooms are using technology for the first time to treat students uniquely, to treat them, look at them, allow them to go back, pace themselves differently. Mm. You've never been able to do that before. I always talk about the time machine challenge. If you go back 100 years in time and go to open heart surgery or look at transportation, it's going to look wildly different. You get in a time machine, you go back to a school, 60 seats in the classroom, wow. chalkboard, teacher in front of you, looks roughly the same. For the <laughs> but, first time ever, that's, that's changing. That's but a, that's 100 years ago, probably a little easier to get rid of the bad teacher. Uh, pro probably, in many cases, the teacher was uh, more literate than you'd find in a lot of school districts today. I, I'm wondering, is this, is technology, is this a way out where Trump is saying basically, if there's a lousy school, lousy teachers, let the kid leave and we'll pay for it somewhere else. Does technology give us the opportunity if you can't fire a bad teacher to basically uh, do a distance learning and make the teacher irrelevant. I mean, it ultimately, could, could every kid just get, uh, get their education good, through a screen instead of the uh, It's a good question. System? That would certainly break up that monopoly of yeah, unions and, and this inability to actually fire a teacher. So we deal with tens of thousands of teachers every day. Uh, teachers, the vast majority of they're teachers, your customers, listen, I guess. they're Sorry. not my customers. Uh, uh, they are literally the ones offering hugs. They are the people feeding kids. They're spending their own money on kids every day. So the efforts of teachers are heroic. Here's, For here, sure. here's the challenge, uh, that teachers have different levels of resources depending what district they're in. It's super easy to throw it all on the teachers and not understand the challenges that every kid gets out of bed with in the morning. Mm. Um, now, what technology can do to help teachers do their job better, reach more kids, do it in a more significant way um, than the tiny resources that they have today, is to allow access to that technology. The challenge is it's super expensive, which is one of the reasons why we're bringing 
the private sector foundations and others into this to fund it for school districts. So, but you're just saying that it's a resource problem, not a teacher problem. And I was educated mostly in the public school system, and I had some uh, really lousy teachers, and I had great teachers who used the same resources. Yeah, do, Every single you're, profession you're, is going to have lousy, uh, you know, a, a percentage of folks who don't do their job well. I think the vast majority of teachers. But in business and in a technology company, if a person's not doing their job well, they can be fired. And the performance can get better. In, with teachers, it's a lot harder to do that. Uh, you know, it, it is. I think the, the challenge uh, is really that you have disparate resources that come into these districts across the country. And what we need to do is focus on giving teachers more and more resources, give them more and more technology, more ability to change the lives of kids. That's what everyone should be focusing on and not as much uh, calling them out as the answer for why certain kids aren't successful. Morgan, real quick. Right, but we spend more money on education than almost any country in the world. So I think as Americans, we have to be honest with ourselves that in many school districts, we're failing our students. And if you're looking at it from a business perspective and you're a businessman, the model is broken. So I'm passionate about school choice because I think if you're a single mom in, in a bad zip code, as you mentioned earlier, you want to send your kid to the best school. Why not give parents that choice? when they can't afford to send the kid to a private school, right? The system is failing them. So here we are sitting here on a TV show and saying, well, we just need more money for education. If you're a single mom watching this today, you're worried about your kid's education, let's give that mom a choice. Let's, let's say, I want to send my kid to the best school. Why are we against choice? Yeah, so I, listen, choice isn't my, uh, school choice isn't really whatever FI is about. Whatever FI has uh, really been built on is that there are these core things. Mm -hmm. If you think about the health of students, if you think about whether they know about how finance works, about how reading remediation and things during summertime when they lose 38% of their math skills, those are the areas where kids are falling behind. And if you're born into a high poverty area, you're going to lose 38% of your math and reading skills over the course of the summer. That's an area where technology wow. can creep into places like the Mississippi Delta, the Black Belt of Alabama, Native American reservations. And that's where technology can be used to reinforce those things so that kids get off on the right foot when they come back to school and hit the door like they have over the last couple of days. That's where technology can win. Yeah. That's where technology can be helpful. That's where technology can help that single mom. That's where technology can help that teacher that is looking for new resources and doesn't want to go and harvest the parts of the internet to try and figure out what works and what doesn't. That's what EverFi is trying to do. Mm. That's what the people who are behind us are trying to do. Six million students will go through this next year to get certified. It's going to be an amazing change to the education right. system. Big time stuff. Tom, good for you. That's yeah. uh, terrific. We'll be watching. Thank, Thank you so you much. So and that's much. an amazing stat that kids lose 38% of their know-how in, in math. Um, and reading in, in the summertime. Tom Davidson joining us this morning.